Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's take another look at Manny Pacquiao's victory over Keith Thurman, right? It'll be the first post-fight video I do, but I'm guessing by now many of you have looked at several, right? First, let me just say, more beer for us. <laughs> right. Manny Pacquiao delivered, quite frankly, he delivered big, right? Because when I made the first video on the fight, Pacquiao was the underdog, according to the betting line, right? So Pacquiao delivered big. I believe this fight follows what Freddie Roach said, right? You remember the movie When Harry Met Sally? Well, as Freddie Roach put it, this was when one time met all time, right? Keith Thurman, let's face it, he wasn't ready for Manny Pacquiao. I believe there's an open question on whether prime Keith Thurman, and understand when I say prime Keith Thurman, you have to go back a few years, don't you? He's coming off a long layoff. He's coming off a subpar. Let's be blunt here. Let's not be polite because we're talking about gambling. Let's keep it real. He's coming off a subpar performance against Jose Cito Lopez, an opponent I'm sure Thurman thought he was going to finish inside of the distance. Instead, in that seventh round, Thurman got battered, almost lost that fight. Now, let me just say this. Boxing is different from team sports right? You see baseball players and they show up for spring training, right? Some of these guys look at major league fastballs, even all-stars, and they're just not ready for it because they've spent the off season hanging with family, celebrating Christmas, right? Hanging with the kids on school vacations, going on their own vacation with their significant other and stuff like that. So they show up and it takes them months to get into mid-season form, doesn't it? Well, understand, you know, basketball, same thing. Guys show up, they're out of breath. There's a preseason, guys look rusty. Some guys get hurt in preseason, their bodies aren't ready, right? They aren't really in playoff shape until several months into the season. Well, understand in boxing, Different guys are at different parts of the season, aren't they? Manny Pacquiao has been busy. Manny Pacquiao has been fighting high-level opposition. I'd take Lucas Matisse in a fight over Jose Cito Lopez. Right? I've said this many times here online. It's one of my more controversial opinions, and that surprises me. But Adrian Broner, in my opinion, is a defensive wizard, right? Broner, in his worst fight, the fight against Marcus Maidana, went the distance in that fight. Think about it, right? Broner's gone the distance with Mikey Garcia. Broner, of course, went the distance with Manny Pacquiao, right? I've watched Broner long enough to realize Broner went the distance with Sean Porter, that Broner knows when to move, how to block punches, how to not get hit. So that's the fight Manny's coming off of. In fact, he fights Matisse, he fights Broner, right? He's been fighting high-level opposition. Manny's been staying busy. Look, you see the gray here. I remember when I was 40. Trust me, I understand people who say, wow, but Manny's 40 years old, right? I can just tell you unequivocally. My body bounced back a hell of a lot better at 30 than it did 40, right? I get that Manny's 40, but Manny's an active 40. He's in the middle of the season. Manny's been busy. Now, by contrast, Keith Thurman hasn't been busy. He's been out on injury, right? Then Thurman comes back. He fights Jose Cito Lopez. I want people... So just think about the feet for a second, right? Does Jose Cito Lopez move as well as Manny Pacquiao? 
If you were chasing Jose Cito Lopez, would it be harder or easier to find him than to find Manny Pacquiao? Let me say two. I heard a uh, very well-known radio sports jockey. I'm not going to name him. I'm not here to diss anyone. Before this fight, talk about how he met both Manny and Keith Thurman. And Keith Thurman was the bigger man. Just looked stronger. You know, he just looked bigger than Manny Pacquiao. So this guy said, hey, with Pacquiao's age, Pacquiao's finished. Right? He expected Keith Thurman to beat Manny. But you and I know this is boxing. Sometimes a shorter man, think Dempsey, think Marciano, think Tyson, right? Sometimes a shorter man has the advantage because he's harder to find in the ring. If I want to hit Manny Pacquiao in the body, good luck with that. Right? A lot of taller guys are going to have to reach to find Pacquiao's body. Add in the fact that Pacquiao has legs that are second to none in boxing. Right? Understand, they say the legs are the first to go. They haven't gone on Manny Pacquiao. So, I'm guessing, just completing the analogy here, if I'm a baseball player and I go to spring training and I'm a little bit rusty, certain pitches are going to be harder to hit than others. Right? I see a curveball. I'm like, whoa, I'm not, I'm not ready for that. Maybe the fastball I can get to because it's straight once I figure out the timing. But the curve, wow, you know, I, I was last year in September. Now it's February in Arizona or South Florida, and I'm seeing a curveball, and my timing is not right on the fastball even. Well, understand, when Keith Thurman hops in the ring against Manny Pacquiao, he hasn't fought anyone since the Sean Porter fight, who remotely moves as well around the ring as Manny Pacquiao. He's fought no one, right? So when Thurman, showing the arrogance of being unbeaten, showing the arrogance of being 10 years younger than his opponent, showing the ignorance that comes from not realizing where he was in terms of his lack of sharpness. Right? Keep in mind, Thurman hasn't had a KO for years now, right? He only had one fight before this. Before that, he was out a prolonged period of time. Thurman was going around saying that he expected to knock out Pacquiao in the first round. But first round! Just think about all the people Manny Pacquiao has fought. Folks, he fought Antonio Margarito who's bigger than Keith Thurman, who's very front foot heavy. Think about all the people Manny Pacquiao has fought. When's the last time you saw Manny Pacquiao even knocked down in the first round? Right? When, when Thurman started talking about knocking out Pacquiao in the first round and how he put money on him in Vegas. By the way, Somewhere in Vegas right now, they're planning on building a new addition to the sports book, thanks to Keith Thurman, I'm sure. Right? Thurman seemed to think he was Mike Tyson in his prime, where Tyson famously knocked out a guy in the first round after betting on himself in the first round. Right? But Tyson wasn't fighting Manny Pacquiao. Folks, to knock down Manny Pacquiao in the first round, forget knockout, to knock him down you have to find him. Did Keith Thurman think he had the legs to find Manny Pacquiao? Did he think he had the timing to find Manny Pacquiao? Folks, it's February. It's Arizona. It's South Florida for Keith Thurman. He's just getting back in the saddle. He's not ready to ride a real bull. So the first round comes out, and that's a revealing round. That's the best round of the fight, in my opinion. 
Thurman comes out, and Thurman's hunting Manny Pacquiao. He's hunting him. Right? There's one person in the ring who believes Thurman's hype. It's Keith Thurman. He believes his hype. He's actually going for the KO in the first round. He seemed to think he was fighting not a world-class opponent. He seemed to think he was fighting a 40-year-old world-class opponent. Pacquiao starts moving. There's actually a moment in that round where Thurman comes forward. Pacquiao moves away from him. You understand that Thurman has completely misjudged his ability to get close to Pacquiao, to hit Pacquiao with a sustained series of punches. Manny's moving. By the way, you've heard me here online use phrases like front foot, back foot. Right? Understand, Pacquiao moves well on both. Right? I don't think Pacquiao fights that well backing up, but he moves well backing up. So there are moments in this fight where Thurman comes forward throwing punches. Pacquiao moves backwards. He's not staying in the pocket with him. Understand, Pacquiao's not there to fight a mid-range hooker fight like Danny Garcia. Right, Pacquiao's moving backwards as Thurman comes forward. Thurman throws punches. They don't hit Pacquiao. Then Pacquiao's pivoting. Pacquiao's a shorter guy. Moves fast. Thurman can't handle the pivots. What I want you to do, too, is to look at Pacquiao's feet. How does a guy move that fast while always seeming to have his right leg, he's a southpaw, his right leg, coiled and ready to support a straight left hand. So, of course, the knockdown comes in the later part of the round. Thurman's backing away from Pacquiao. First round doesn't understand Manny Pacquiao's foot speed. I don't think people appreciate it until they're in the ring with him. You look on a film and you say, wow, he's fast. He's fast. Right? Thurman, before the fight, said, people are underjudging my speed. Well, not relative to Manny Pacquiao. So Thurman's backing up. Now, you've heard me here say, Manny Pacquiao's like Deontay Wilder. Right? Wilder's a straight right hand. Pacquiao's a straight left hand. Thurman looks like he's looking at Manny Pacquiao's left hand. Folks, at 40 years old, Manny Pacquiao has greatly improved his right hand. His right hand is a big part of the knockdown, as is the fact that Thurman's backing up. Manny is closing. This almost seems like a scene out of the movie Jaws, right? The swimmer's there, looks over, sees the shark, tries to move away. The shark moves faster. Pacquiao closes the distance as if he were Deion Sanders on a football field. Right? Thurman gets dropped in part because Thurman's looking at Pacquiao's left and Pacquiao hits him with a great right hand. In part because Thurman's backing up. He thought Pacquiao was across the ring. Here is Pacquiao up in his grill. Now understand, I believe boxing's an expectation game. Let's pretend we're judges going into the fight. Who's the sentimental favorite? Guess what? It's not the guy who's 10 years younger, who's physically bigger. <laughs> you know, who, who looks like he has a lot of physical advantages. It's not that guy, right? It's the all-time great, the guy we've seen in wars. The guy we remember fighting Miguel Cotto. The guy we remember fighting Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Let Waba. Marquez. Right? Mayweather. That's the guy getting the sympathy here. Right? Implicit in all of this is, you know, if Keith Thurman loses, he can get up, dust himself off. He has time. He can bounce back. He can fight you know, several more years. With Pacquiao, the feeling is, hey, this guy's 40. He's an all-time great. I just hope 
Manny doesn't get too hurt in this fight. Is there anyone you know of who was going around before this fight saying, hey, I just hope Keith Thurman doesn't get hurt in this fight? So understand the expectation game. Once you see the first round and you realize, wow, Pacquiao has faster legs. <laughs> Keith Thurman. Once you see the level of explosiveness, so you say to yourself, you know, one time doesn't hit harder than all time. Right? Manny has that left hand ready, folks. You sense the importance. Well, by the end of the first round, your thoughts are validated because one time's on the canvas. So he's already lost the first round. You've already thought to yourself, wow, you know, Pacquiao got a knockdown. <laughs> Pacquiao's doing well in this fight, right? That carries over. I mean, understand, in a fight like this, where one guy is loved, and let's not kid ourselves, not every great fighter is loved. I believe Manny Pacquiao is loved like Ray Leonard was loved. I believe both of those guys are loved more than Oscar De La Hoya was ever loved. By the way, when I say loved, I don't mean by their family and friends. I'm talking about by the boxing public, right? Charisma is a hard thing to define. It's just like watching the Oscars. And they have like five people nominated for best actor. And for whatever reason, there's that actor who you just like. You know the other four contenders did great work that any of the other four are deserving of the Oscar, but you're rooting for your guy, right? Or woman, right? You're rooting for your favorite. They're your favorite. That's who Manny Pacquiao is. So understand, and I know life's unfair, right? But we're gambling. We're not here to bemoan the unfairness of life. We're here to profit from it. Right? The bottom line is Manny Pacquiao is the sentimental favorite. When Manny Pacquiao knocks down the younger lion, that younger lion's up against it. I'm just telling you, there's momentum scoring. You see Manny Pacquiao drop Keith Thurman, you start to focus on Pacquiao's power. Right? You notice that Manny Pacquiao just has the faster hands than Thurman. It's faster than Thurman. That Thurman's not ready to chase Pacquiao all around the ring. Right? Pacquiao wins most of the early rounds. But there's a second half of the fight, folks. Thurman actually starts to make adjustments. He starts to shake off some of the rust. But by then, apart from the one judge who gave Thurman the fight, <laughs> right? by then the crowd's already been hypnotized. They understand that they're seeing, if you can believe this, an upset where the 40-year-old who actually, according to the betting line, was the favorite entering the ring is doing something magical. That's the storyline, right? No one's going around saying, hey, the favorite won the fight. No, no, no. Right? People are saying, hey, Manny Pacquiao, what a surprise. Right? And bookies are feeding into this. They're, they're hiding the betting line because they want you to buy into the mythology so that your next time at the casino, you're betting on other 40-year-olds who you think are underdogs. Right Now, let me just say this, and I want to be diplomatic here. Keith Thurman could have won this fight. Right? As I was watching the fight, you know, Thurman has the tools. Thurman makes adjustments. Thurman's two-handed. Thurman does hit hard. I don't think he hits harder than Manny Pacquiao. I don't think he's as sudden as Manny Pacquiao. Right? I think Manny Pacquiao is able to land punches, flush punches, better than Thurman because Pacquiao's feet allow him to just jump in at different angles. And Pacquiao after decades in the sport, can land that straight left from almost any angle. Right? But once Thurman figured out the timing, you notice the punch numbers. 
right? Thurman started to land more punches than Manny Pacquiao, didn't he? You started to realize that many of the punches Pacquiao was landing were jabs. Now, don't get me wrong. I thought Thurman ran out of time. Manny Pacquiao won the fight on my scorecard, right? Thurman does close, but Manny wins the fight on my scorecard. Right now, all of that said, I agree with the two judges who had Manny winning the fight. But I wasn't remotely surprised that Keith Thurman, after the fight, was calling for a rematch. Manny would be a fool to fight Keith Thurman again. Right? You only have the element of surprise. You only have Thurman looking that bewildered on Manny Pacquiao's foot speed. Being that confused, believing that he could walk down Manny Pacquiao in the first half of the first round. Just look at the film. Right? You only have that level of surprise the first time. Right? It doesn't work the second time. Right? The second time, Thurman is going to have flashbacks on how fast Manny was. Thurman is going to realize that he can't go straight back like he did at the end of the first round. Right, Thurman's going to know that Manny's right hand now, late in Manny's career, has more pop than it did earlier. In fairness to Manny, he throws some great right hands against Ricky Hatton. In my opinion, and you can look at the films yourself, he didn't have this right hand when he fights El Terrible Eric Morales early in his career. Let's remember, Morales beats Pacquiao in one of those fights. Right, so Manny has a knowledge base. One of the secrets to 40-year-olds is they start well. They're great as long as their stamina is high. Right? Manny looked like a video game the first four rounds of the fight. You know, when you're playing a video game and you, you know, cross over the magic pill or the magic bush or something, and then suddenly your little contestant on the screen is moving faster than everything around it, right? That's how Manny looked the first four rounds. The problem is the stamina, right? Manny started fast. Manny's in great shape for 40, but you did notice he faded a little bit late in this fight. Now, let's just throw out some ideas, right? I wasn't surprised that Manny won the fight. Obviously, I made two videos where I picked him. I was surprised by the opening line. It's as if, you know, that had Thurman a favorite. It's as if we thought Keith Thurman was the one who had fought Matisse and had just fought Adrian Broner. It's as if we thought Matisse had done the work over the last two years. Excuse me. Thurman had done the work over the last two years that Manny Pacquiao had done. Right? A rusty Keith Thurman who would lose to the prime version of himself, who didn't quite have the timing which you would need against a guy who moves as much as Pacquiao. In other words, you had a twofold thing going on. Thurman, rusty. Pacquiao, very hard style for a rusty person. Right? This is like facing a knuckleballer. When you're rusty, when you haven't been looking at fastballs and curveballs, now suddenly you show up first day of spring training camp and they have Tim Wakefield or Phil Necro on the mound. Right? So Keith Thurman didn't give himself the best chance to win. He fought Pacquiao at the wrong time. Sometimes the best move a fighter can make is to turn down the payday, right? This fight should have happened next year. One, Pacquiao would have been older. That helps, right? 41 instead of 40, hey, maybe slow down. Isn't that the Canelo point of view when it comes to uh, fighting Golovkin, right? I'll fight him next year. You remember that before the first one? Now this year we have the, hey, I'm, I'm taking December off, right? All I'm saying here is Keith Thurman was rusty. He starts to figure out the puzzle late. It's too late. It's an L. You won.
Now, let's just imagine a scenario here, right? Let's say, as I think is going to happen, Errol Spence beat Sean Porter. Okay, Porter, by the way, Manny Pacquiao's former sparring partner, is the perfect person to fight. He's shorter like Pacquiao. He moves around the ring a lot like Pacquiao. Doesn't know how to move or box as well as Manny. Right, Manny's moving around the ring, but somehow, whereas in Porter's last fight, he's moving outside and you wonder what's the purpose. Right, with Pacquiao, Pacquiao's moving, but he always seems to be here. He always seems to be here. His straight left always seems to be able to reach you. Right, there's more urgency and power with Manny Pacquiao. I get the feeling I could stand there See Sean Porter coming, say, oh, I messed up. I won't be able to get a hand up, get hit by Porter, and do okay. Or maybe I can pull a Kel Brook. You remember that Porter fight? Porter comes inside. I say, man, I'm out of position. Let me just lean forward and grab Porter, who has a loop on his shots. Can't do that with Manny Pacquiao. Right? Pacquiao's just too sudden. Right? If you reach to grab Pacquiao and that left hand gets in, you're going down. Right? You don't want Manny to coming inside, you reach to grab him, he bounces instead, then he's letting his hands go. Bad visual. Right? Reminds everyone in the crowd that Pacquiao has faster hands than you. Not only that, you're getting battered. Look at the highlights of Pacquiao against De La Hoya from all those years ago. So let's say Errol Spence beat Sean Porter. Now, Errol Spence has a great jab. I didn't know it. I was wrong about his fight against Mikey Garcia. I took an L on that fight. I admit it. I wasn't expecting Errol Spence to be able to keep Mikey Garcia away from him. That surprised me. But the question I have is what level? of jab does Errol Spence have against an opponent who moves as well as Manny Pacquiao, right? Because understand, we know when Spence has both of his feet under him, right? When he has both of his feet under him, Errol Spence has a hell of a jab. Mikey Garcia just didn't have the foot speed, just didn't have the elusiveness. Right? Is Manny Pacquiao going to allow Errol Spence to have both of his feet under him? Right? If Spence lifts his feet and is moving, does Spence have the jab he can throw that stiff when he's on the move? Right? We've seen some stiff jabs when guys are on the move. Right? Ray Robinson. Ali, there's a fight here online. It's a must-watch. Ernie Shavers drops Larry Holmes. Holmes is this close to losing his title. Holmes gets off the canvas with one of the most murderous punchers of the 1970s in front of him. Holmes gets on his toes and starts to dance. All Holmes has as he tries to clear his head is his jab. And folks, it's magnificent. Right? Is that Errol Spence? Or does Errol Spence look at the Jeff Horn film? And that's an important film if you're tracking Manny's career. Where a guy doesn't have the hand speed on Manny, doesn't have the foot speed on Manny, decides he's just going to run at Manny and wrestle with him impose size on him. Now, Spence is a guy who is rare in boxing, in my opinion. He's a hooker, but I would say he's a short-range hooker. In other words, you notice Danny Garcia, mid-range hooker, needs a little space to get off his hooks. I've seen Errol Spence fights where the guy is practically on Spence's chest. And Spence is leaning and getting off very short, hard shots. Does Errol Spence, who's bigger than Manny Pacquiao, 
play a cat and mouse game. And then in the second half of the fight, start to roughhouse like Jeff Horn did. Let's remember, Jeff Horn is really roughhousing Pacquiao later in that fight. Pacquiao's landing shots. The referee is close to stopping the fight in favor of Pacquiao. But Jeff Horn roughs him up. So let me just say one final thought here. I believe Manny Pacquiao at 40 in an individual sport, right? Think tennis, for example, has a chance to run the table, right? He's already beaten Broner. He's already beaten Thurman, right? I think he's too fast for Errol Spence. The same logic I thought of with regard to Mikey Garcia, that if he gets by Spence's jab, Right? Spence could be in trouble to me because Spence isn't quick twitch. Right? By that I mean, you know, Spence looks methodical to me. He doesn't look cat quick to me. There's part of Mike Tyson's game that Errol Spence is missing to me. Right? I just get the feeling that Manny could start fast against Errol Spence. Understand. Manny got the title against Ledwaba, who at the time had one of boxing's best jabs. Manny's style is made to beat the jab because Manny can get low. He's bouncing around. You don't know what to jab at. Because Manny is shorter, you aren't able, and, and moves his head, right? Manny comes in like this. You aren't able to say, okay, I'm going to jab him to the chest, because Manny's too low and Manny's too sudden, right? Understand too, while you're focused on style, trying to slow down the fight in your head to figure out where to punch him and stuff like that, when he jumps inside, it's not a Sean Porter dynamic, right? It's not a, he jumps inside, you say, okay, I can take his punch, right? Kel Brook goes 12 rounds with Sean Porter, beats him. Right? Most guys go 12 rounds with Sean Porter. With Manny Pacquiao, folks, I know many of you are going to say, hey, look, over the last 11 years, Pacquiao hasn't stopped a lot of guys. What I want you to do, though, is to think about the guys he's dropped in fights. Right, Chris Algieri makes it to the finish line against Manny Pacquiao. He's dropped several times in that fight, right? Shane Mosley makes it to the finish line against Manny Pacquiao. He's dropped in that fight. Keith Thurman, this fight, makes it to the finish line. He's dropped, right? If you're fighting the crowd favorite, a guy the public loves, a guy who was a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer before this fight against Keith Thurman, and Manny Pacquiao comes out and drops you, folks, it's almost game, set, and match. How are you going to come back in that fight? You get the judges in the crowd focused on Manny's power as well as his hand speed. Good luck making the comeback. Keith Thurman tried valiantly here. Right? Tried valiantly here. Closes the gap in the last half of the fight. It wasn't enough. That last round, didn't many of you think all Pacquiao had to do was to survive the round to win the fight? Right? So I think Pacquiao has a shot on Errol Spence. Let me put it this way. I'm guessing Spence is favored, especially if he looks good against Sean Porter and out of fairness to Porter, the guy who Porter just fought, who I didn't think Porter looked that great against, that efficient against, Ugas actually won his last fight against Figueroa, right? A guy who had destroyed Robert the Ghost Guerrero, right? So my point to you is simply, if Spence gets by Sean Porter 
and fights Manny Pacquiao, the betting side of the play would be Manny Pacquiao, wouldn't it? Right? Pacquiao said, hey, I'm going to fight again next year. Right? When you're 40, you get to say, hey, I'm going to slow down a little bit and pick my spots. Right? If his next fight is Errol Spence, buckle up. Early next year already has Deontay Wilder poised to fight Tyson Fury. Right? Manny Pacquiao against Errol Spence would be one of those mega fights. Understand, they're both in the PBC. Now, if Manny gets by Errol Spence, I believe there's only one other guy he has to be for this 10 years after the fact, 10 plus years after the fact, let's be real, to be the Manny Pacquiao era at 147. And that would be Terrence Crawford. Again, I know it's a hard statement. I don't consider Crawford, who at times has looked fast to me, but I don't consider Crawford to be the athlete Manny Pacquiao is. Right? And understand, Crawford's mastery is his preparation and understanding of the sport. Right? Crawford is really the ear, Crawford and Spence are really the heirs to Floyd Mayweather's mental approach to the game. Right? Whatever skills these guys have, understand, they know how to use them. They are masters at strategy. Right? The fight of the year I've seen, the best performance, is Errol Spence. Even after this Manny performance, it's Errol Spence beating Mikey Garcia. Right? Terrence Crawford is the same way. The way he dampens Amir Khan's speed was masterful. Right? Masterful. But understand, Amir Khan lacks Manny's boxing IQ. Can we say that in a video here on YouTube? Manny is savvy. In other words... Manny's moving around the ring, but yet Manny's always ready, always ready to lean in and throw that straight left. Just look at how he always has that right leg in a position where he can plant it and come across with the left hand. I believe while Khan can match Manny in hand speed, I'm not going to deny that. I believe Manny fights a lot faster than Khan, right? The difference between the two, you can just tell looking at their heads, right? Khan's head is stationary. You can find it. Manny is shorter, he's crouched, and he's moving his head, right? If you throw on Manny's head and you miss his head, folks, you're in trouble because Pacquiao's hands are lightning quick and Pacquiao is a fighter, right? So, you know, great stamina, certainly for the first half of a fight. So let me congratulate Pacquiao. Let me close this video by saying this. In a one-on-one -on -one sport, right, you can tell the greatness of a guy by how far out of his generation he's able to travel, right? This would be like Roger Federer being in his 40s and still taking out, you know, young guys at things like the U.S. Open, right? Well, I'm just going to name some names here because it's really noteworthy with regard to Pacquiao. Pacquiao, these are some of the biggest fights that Manny had. Manny is so far removed from his generation that led Waba, the champ who Manny took his title, has retired. Marco Antonio Barrera has retired. Eric El Terrible Morales, these are great fighters, folks, retired. Miguel Cotto, retired. Oscar De La Hoya, he has been retired so long, folks, that he's one of the dominant promoters in the sport of boxing, right? Has been Canelo's uh, promoter for years. Shane Mosley, retired. Floyd Mayweather, retired. 
Some of these guys are virtually retired, right? Timothy Bradley, from time to time, talks about returning to the sport. Right? The bottom line is Bradley's well-dressed, and he's on the side commentating on fights. Hasn't fought for a while. Manny has fought and beat a lot of great fighters. He's two fights away from conquering this generation. Now, I follow a lot of sports. Baseball, football, basketball, tennis, right? If this guy pulls this off, it's going to be one of the most momentous accomplishments I've seen any sportsman accomplish, right? He's two fights away. Granted, they're the biggest parts of the mountain range. But if he beats Errol Spence, and if he beats Terrence Crawford, he will have conquered 147. He can plant his flag, with all due respect, to Danny Garcia and the countless others. Right? Pacquiao, at that point, would then be able to pass the torch to the next generation, knowing that he spanned multiple generations. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Don't hesitate to give us your thoughts on Errol Spence against Sean Porter. Right? Especially if you think I'm wrong and you think Porter wins that fight. Right? Don't hesitate to give us your thoughts on Manny Errol Spence. On Manny Terrence Crawford. Let it rip. Thanks for stopping by.